Hi there, I'm FrankDude72, and this may seem like a troll post, but in actuality it's not. As you see from the title, I'm asking the question, does the USCCA, the United States Concealed Carry Association, put out bad info on gun versus knife? First off, most of what they do is really good. They serve a lot of people, they do a lot of good for people. This is not I hate them or anything like that. They, I, I really like a lot of the things they're doing, but on this particular topic, gun versus knife defense, they've been putting out a lot of dodgy, dated, just really not good information. And this is Saturday, July 14th. They'll be having a live stream of some gun versus knife stuff on July 16th, which I'm getting married on that day, so I, I won't be able to post questions, and honestly, my, my opinion of live streams is, is just flooded with a bunch of nonsensical questions. I really don't enjoy it. But back to the topic at hand. Again, this is a, what they're doing is honestly what most handgun self-defense trainers do. They're putting out information that, that is considered best practices, by some, but in actuality, it's not been proven to work under stress. And I'm singling them out because they're a big enough organization that they reach a lot of people, and so a lot of people are going to be misled by some of the information that they're putting their stamp of approval on, but it's not limited to them, of course. So, even though this affects firearms trainers and self-defense trainers across the broad spectrum. The reason I'm really bringing it up to them is A, they're a huge organization and they reach a lot of people, do a lot of good mostly, but they reach so many people that, is, that th at least this message, maybe it'll get out to a bunch of other people. But also, most self-defense trainers who focus on firearms only use live firearms and so that's some of where their training and misinformation may come from versus the USCCA has a host of uh, uh, force on force options with their stress vests, the laser stress vests and their UTM paintball guns very similar to this wrap paintball gun or uh, you know airsoft there's all kinds of things you can use and they use those and they put those in their videos and they train scenario stuff so because they have the access to all those resources and money and to reach other trainers, they have a lot less excuse than some guy who works a day job, uh, pardon the wind, and, uh, and only has access to so many training resources. So let's just dive right into what I thought was the particular dodgy information. Okay. There, there were really three things, two, two big ones and one that kind of pushed me over, uh, I, I guess. The first one, a month or two ago, in Kevin McLowski's In the Fray blog, he's one of their senior people, I believe executive editor, and, and he puts out a, a video blog that is m mostly self-defense oriented, sometimes products, and he specifically was talking about how you need to train in close. Totally agree, the zero to five feet or four steps and in, however you want to define it, arena, where you're going, say this is our bad guy, from close contact to clench to ground, that's actually a discipline that gets way too little, uh, is addressed way too little in self-defense with firearms training it it's you and what he demonstrated is what gets demonstrated by a lot of people who only focus on live fire so basically what he was talking about if someone's coming on to you and beating on you or whatever in a close clinch distance situation I'll use my friend over here as as my example and we're clinch distance he advocated to take a what's basically a slot vertical fend and then shoot from retention 
here. This is a dated technique I was taught in the 90s when people were finally getting away from the speed rock, which is leaning back like this and shooting from there. And I'll talk about why that's not really good in, in a bit. The second thing was an article just came out about the week this is being filmed by one of their contributors named Scott Kelly. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Where he was talking about knife defense and he was specifically talking about uh, what he does to train for the tooler drill, which is the showing people that, you, that someone can cross in one and a half seconds 21 feet with a knife versus that's about how long it takes for you to draw and fire two shots from a stationary position. Um, that, but what he was saying, how you should defend yourself is to bring up your arm. It was text only, so I'm just guessing. Somehow bring this up, whether it's a Salat vert horizontal fend, what Mark Denny calls the Dracula, or it seemed more like it was placed it up here, and use this as a sacrificial lamb per se, to take a bunch of slashes and cuts while you learn to draw your pistol at a knifer. So, uh, that's being taught to people who are paying him money to tell them how to survive a knife attack. The third thing, because they're having this big event where they're where they're teaching people how to defend from a knife. Uh, I figured I'd, I'd post this video before that happens. Although that event is how you defend someone else from a knife. And it's they, they've been building it up with videos that contain a scenario. And the scenario is not like with normal knife fighting. It's a dude grabbing a woman's hand and he's just holding it in a threatening manner. They said it's grabbed from some headlines and so, some video footage of a guy stabbing in a target, but apparently that dude stabbed a whole bunch of people before he took this woman hostage and came from behind her versus this guy is just holding her arm or she's got two hands on his arm and he's threatening her. And it seemed like it was just a scenario set up to allow their... Uh, they're, they're trainees to win the scenario fairly easily and so before I talk about any more about how, why they're why such scenario what such techniques are, are wrong specifically the first two is what I'm really addressing is let's let's get a, a few thing, things down if you're using in techniques whether they're empty hand or weapon based to defend against attack, you're, de you're dealing with a situation that is most likely reactionary. And let, unless it's an active shooter or somebody who is engaging other people, if they're engaging you, that means you're reacting to that. You cannot just brandish your gun everywhere you go. That's, I don't know of anywhere in the United States where this is legally permissible to, as soon as you just think somebody's a little bit off that you can brandish your gun and not fa face legal consequences if prosecuted. Uh, so you have to recognize the threat and this goes back to the Tuller drill and the whole 21 feet from you that a knifer can cross the, the distance assuming you remain stationary. Uh, I don't know of anybody who can project a force field to keep people 21 feet from them the entire time, everywhere, where they go, all of their lives. I, that's physically impossible. So you do have to train for when people get closer. And those who criminally assault you engage in such behaviors like interviews, or what they're called, and, and other methodologies to get closer to you, to hopefully, if they've got contact weapons like knives, or fists, or hammers, or crowbars, or whatever, to get to a range where they can put hands on you. So, 
the techniques you've got to learn have to take into account that you're going to re be reacting in a split second and that you may be having to deal with this kind of range. So, and you cannot control whether he's armed, what sort of skill he has, how many accomplices he may have. You cannot control any of these because he will be selecting you and you only know the threat from once you recognize the threat. And a lot of times that won't be until they're at this di distance. Hopefully a little farther away, but it, it just depends on the circumstances. So knowing all those factors, the te tactics, techniques, and procedures we use to keep ourselves safe need to assume a few things. We need to assume they're, the person is armed and until we know definitively they are not. So our, all our tactics, all the things we do to defend ourselves in the moment where we are attacked, have to assume a weapon's into play, even if you don't see it. For example, this coming around will look like a punch right up until it doesn't. And there are so many anecdotal stories of people not seeing a knife until it, after it cut them, that it's not worth endorsing anything that doesn't work towards assuming a weapon is in hand. You can't determine the skill or the number of bad guys around, so you have to assume there's always one more person. You have to assume that your assailant is skilled. So, based on all those parameters set forward, why do I think the techniques I was discussing were lacking? First off, they were, they were videos given quick lessons or an article given quick lesson, and the, in the context, it's a lesson for beginners. Here's the technique that you need to learn first. Even though they, they were completely deficient for fighting, weapon, fighting weapons or multiple attackers or, or whatever. If, if, there is, if you just have the time within a class to teach your students one or two techniques, either one of those is at least 50th on my list. So let's talk about why that is. First off, the draw while you, this, while you take cuts via here, assuming you'll take cuts via here. This is, this is about as dumb as when the FBI did, did this technique where they put the arm in the same manner to cover your heart by putting your arm over your bulletproof vest supposedly giving the bullet more meat to fight through before it hits you in the chest. Anybody who has never been cut, who has actually been cut or seen autopsy photos of people who have been stabbed and slashed, is just going to immediately recognize the massive dirt that, that follows this technique. And see, I don't, I don't even t take money for when I instruct people, these are people who are professionals who are putting themselves out there as subject matter experts, and you're telling people that you should put your arm over to take cuts? It doesn't seem like someone like that actually understands how quickly a knife fight happens. For instance, if, if we are contact basically arm's length away from one another, how fast can somebody who trains just stuff like the, the slap and tap where you're grabbing the back of the head and, and stabbing in or the sewing machine technique? I mean, it's, that happens fast enough to like, it's basically, hey, what are you looking at me like that? Don't you look at me like that. I said don't look at me like that. How fast did that happen? You honestly think you can grab your gun and defend against that while that happens? You really believe that? 
again, you don't know if somebody's armed right till they have. Do you really believe that you can just, your gun is this magic shield that will blow someone off of you if someone cut, comes at, at you with a, with a simple, hey, I don't like your face. What do you think you're doing around here? You better get the... How fast did that happen? You honestly think that you can just grab your gun and blow someone off of you and they will just magically melt into being harmless. You're probably going to end up like that target. Probably a lot worse and a lot messier. And if you think that was bad, just imagine with a, just even a folding knife. If I've got within three steps of this guy, it's like, what are you looking at me like that? I don't like your face. Better. Yeah, you're gonna just suddenly put your hand up here or here and take all those slashes. Really? And even if you can fight through the chaos of all that craziness happen to you and you can go for your gun, if someone's this close, you don't think they're going to feel you move and try to foul your draw? I mean, with appendix, it's smooth enough. Yeah, maybe you will, although you basically lost. You're just making it a tie. But especially if you carry strong side, look at this big triangle strong side makes. If someone's in on you and they're really skilled, you think they can't lock you up, put you in some grappling, you're, you're in a ready-made freaking chicken wing already, and you really think you're going to just hold, hold a, a quick fin while all that's going on, or make your arm absorb some of the blows before he transitions to your neck? The second bit of advice in Kevin McClowski's uh, video and what is taught in a lot of gun classes when he's going for the, uh, the vertical fend and the retention shot is afterwards move back and a lot of times people tell you to continue to move back and he's done that in other videos about moving backwards and extend your sight picture. Ne never mind, chances are if it's anything like a high recidivist criminal they're going to be grabbing onto you and it's probably overpowering you, especially if, say, you're a petite woman and he's, you know, one and a half times my size or something like that. But let's say you can even get away from a grab and stab attack. You can push yourself away. Let's, let's say that even is possible, which it is possible, but it's, it's not, that's not even likely. But let's say you can. Can you move backwards faster than, than the other person can move forwards? I mean, I've been with martial arts instructors that teach knife fighting where you're moving backwards at this rapid pace. And the trouble is, no matter how good you are at backwards motion, you're nowhere near as good as just everyone is at forward motion, at moving where your toes are pointed. And the second big problem with that is the world is not friendly to somebody backing up, tunneling on a bad guy, and not looking where they're going. Just in, here, in this area, you can probably see a few things. If you're in an urban environment, a, a great thing to deal with is curbs on streets, walls, mailboxes. There's so many things for you to back into, and if you look online and watch police force on force videos where they're shooting and moving backwards there's a lot of them where they trip over stuff and fall and it might be funny if it not for the fact that it's a police officer fighting for his life and do you want to be fighting for your life moving backwards and trip over something and have a bunch of people laugh at your viral video never mind you will know in that moment you were terrified for your life so, 
putting all that aside, what are the solutions? What should be taught? I, I, I want to... I want to point out, and I probably should have done this at the start of the video, I do not consider myself a subject matter expert. I do not charge people for firearms training or self-defense training, and I'm certainly not an attorney. So anything in this video that you hear or see, I'm just a dude who's done a little more force on force than the average bear, is not that great at it, but yet I demonstrate, I would think, at least basic proficiency, I consider myself intermediate skill at best. So you can take t anything I show you here, by all means, please, go and try it out yourself, verify, see whether I'm full of it or not. You owe it to yourself and your family and your loved ones and anybody else who depends on you to check everybody teaching you something to make sure it's not BS. So again, back to what the solution is. I don't have a training partner to practice against. I just have my, my windblown friends here. So we're, we're going to just cover some real quick basics, but please get competent instruction and I'll be giving the names of competent instructors at the end of this video. Um, big things with every attack it's no matter what kind of attack it is you need to you need to get off the line of attack preferably moving where your feet are pointing and you need to nullify the action of the weapon used against you so many people it, it's to the point where where friends of mine just are waiting for the comments on a self-defense video they make of the guy saying, I'll just shoot him. If he's got a knife, I'll just shoot him. It's my magic shield. Watch videos of real stabbings, shootings, contact weapon attacks online and see if, the, if just pulling out a gun will suddenly stop that. When it's down and dirty like those knife attacks I showed, you really want to bet your life on that? So, again, some basic things that can be learned in a class that probably would take about two days or so, maybe even compact the basic things I'm showing into like a four, six hour course of instruction, which means for every firearms and self-defense instructor out there, especially you a CCA who's got the access to resources, there's really no excuse. At this point, you see this and, and you don't do anything to seek out more training, you're, uh, you're what the, the court case Canton, City of Canton versus Harris calls deliberate indifference. And it could put your ass in a legal sling. So, if we, if we get this close, we've done stuff like told the person to back off and they still advance, or they've come around a corner where we didn't give a chance to tell them to back off, they're here, the attack comes, well then, if it it has to be some sort of fend while you're moving, creating distance, and then employing your weapon, whether it's a knife, gun, or, or stick, or whatever you have to defend yourself, if you're so lucky to do it. I know we've got maybe people in the UK or whatever will be watching this, and my heart goes out to you all that, that your, your legal system, it, has put you in such dire danger. But anyway, back to the task at hand. The attack comes, the, the knife attack, the whatever, you just see motion and he's coming at you. Well then, it's an overhand again, it's just... And now... So what what am I doing? Again, all I'm doing is, say it's an underhand thrust, I'm, I'm just fending, stop, stopping, moving, pushing off, And then, once you've created the distance, you can use your weapon to defend yourself. So again, any type of training that's teaching you to use your self-defense weapon against a reactive criminal assault should incorporate fens and moving outside the line of attack. And then when you've created distance, then, then you employ your weapon, not just 
magical force field while the attack's going on. And contextually, if you can't move, say you're in a bathroom stall or a car or a tight hallway or whatever is preventing you that, the same principles basically apply. You just can't move, but you've still got to defend. You've got to trap the arm. And then chances are this won't be this this won't be a uh, situation you can hold on to long. You've got to stop him from whatever he's doing. Also, if you're trapping the arm, you got to make sure that my hand is right where this muzzle is. You got to make sure you so the certain techniques like the steering wheel where this is trapped and you're moving up to a headshot to stop the attack. All of those should be in a basic self-defense curriculum, yet they're not in USCCAs and they're not in most in self-defense instructors who specialize in firearms. Now I get it, when you're on a live fire range, you it's more economical for both getting people through the course of instruction and for having as many students as possible that you want everybody lined up alongside. That's what, how we've always done it. And the whole moving backwards thing, if you're doing live fire, this is the best way you can safely control people who are uh, shooting so, they, so that if somebody's moving at different angles, they don't cross in front of one another's muzzle. I get that. But guess what? That means you, as a self-defense instructor, have to use guns that aren't actual firearms. Training guns, blue guns, rap pistols, UTMs, airsoft, whatever. And USCA, CCA has access to all that, so why are the, those techniques not showing through in any of their demonstrations on knife defense? I want the USCCA and basically all self-defense instructors to succeed. And by succeed, I mean you have students who, if they have to use their training, they go home safely. They get out of the situation as unscathed as possible based on the circumstances. I'm doing this not to trash anybody, USCCA or any other firearms instructors. This is what I just demonstrated and at really entry level proficiency at best um, is, is something that that needs to be fixed, needs to be incorporated into your repertoire of skills, and it's just not, except for very small student populations. So, if you've seen this and you understand any of the concepts I just put out, there's a bunch of court cases, whether it's the one against the city and county of Denver, or whether it's the city of Martin, Papao versus city of, of Martin, or close to that I'm sure I'll put the actual subtitle in the in the deal or uh, city of Harris all of those will say if you are aware it, it all those cases apply to police departments but think about it all it takes is an aggrieved relative of someone you've trained suing you because they died or got seriously injured and you're aware of this information and you didn't incorporate it into your training curriculum and that under that court case it's city of Canton versus Harris is called deliberate indifference it can get police departments into trouble do you want to be the test case for it getting you into trouble as well I mean that's that's kind of appealing to the selfish motivation I mean m most everybody I see who is a self-defense trainer and that includes the USCCA people are seem to be they actually care about keeping people safe so at this point you don't really have an excuse now like I said at the tail end of the video say you've actually gotten the context of some of the things I've been blabbering about where would you go to actually get competent instruction because like I said I'm not a competent instructor I don't take people's money but I think if you're going to take people's money and say I'm a self-defense instructor then you better have the skills down for where that person's probably going to be uh, defending themselves. So I'm going to give you a list of people who I know have met personally. Some of them are even friends. Well, I'm very lucky to have. 
and I've been through their training programs and so I can say yes that this is somewhere you should go. None of them are paying me for endorsing them right now. Probably won't even get a nice dinner or a free training class out of it. I get nothing and as far as my financial stake in any of this well maybe if the you this video goes viral or whatever I might you know make a fifty hundred bucks off a of YouTube AdSense dollars but it's nothing that's gonna allow me to quit my day job so and it probably won't even get that that's if I'm super lucky so uh, so yeah the reason I'm recommending these people it's because I actually believe in what they do first one off is Steve Miles in Central Texas it, he runs the Alive Combative program and he has several adjunct instructors that he certifies. That That's top, top of the line choice. In Las Vegas, there's, um, there's uh, Roger Phillips with Fight Focus Concepts. He, I've done a couple classes with him and the, those are also absolutely excellent and he gets the context of what's being demonstrated here. Uh, on the in Mississippi, there's of course Craig Southnark Douglas and his, uh, I believe it's the ECQC class that teaches a lot of the similar things that we're showing here. That certainly be a good introduction to that. Um, as and as far as in the U.S. as as far as knife only instruction, but that can teach the principles that can lead to you extrapolating this to your gun. On the West Coast, there's Mark Denny of the Dog Brothers. And on the East Coast, there's Tom Sotis of the Amok system. And as well, it, it trains in the U.S., but especially outside of the United States. There's Mark Human uh, out of South Africa, but he trains all over internationally. And the last reason I'm taking the USCCA to task is I actually introduced them by, uh, by some comments in, in an article. Got, talked to some of their customer service staff and connected and and they did not take him up and perhaps they didn't understand what exactly Mark was teaching and why it was important that they incorporated into their curriculum but at this point in time you know if if you don't contact Steve or Roger or Tom or Mark or Craig or Mark Human with a multi-dimensional warrior any of those people, uh, you're, 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 you're dipping your toe into the deliberate indifference waters. And I'm, I'm sure every one of you who trained self-defense, USCCA or Bob's ha handgun shooting out, out of Podunkville, whoever you are, you want, you're training this because you want people to go home at night and not be victims of criminals. So. Get on it. Get proper training. Integrate combatives and movement and fens and creating distance and recognizing criminal assaults into your curriculum. Because if you don't, you're letting people down.